If you've been looking for a way to put some more Excel in your 2DS or 3DS system, you've landed on the right video. I'm about to teach you everything it takes to wirelessly stream your 2DS or 3DS system to your computer. Then you can output the video signal to anything you want, including a PC monitor or even your big screen TV. Grab your jailbroken 2DS or 3DS system in your computer. You're about to learn something new. The first step in the process is to grab the three key downloads you need for this to work. I have all of these websites linked for you in the video description. The first piece of software is called Snickerstream. It's the app that bridges your 3DS and your computer together wirelessly. Scroll down to the Assets section and click the zip file to download it to your computer. The next piece of software is called Boot NTR. This tells your 2DS or 3DS system how and where to look for Snickerstream. Scroll down on this page, but scroll past the graphic images you see to get to the Assets section. Pay close attention here because there are two different versions to consider. If you have a new 3DS or 2DS, you'll want to grab the CIA file shown here. If you have an old Nintendo 2DS or 3DS, click on the file that has the term Mode 3 in it next to the .CIA extension. Choose the file that matches your device type and click on it to download it to your system. In this case, I'll be using a new Nintendo 3DS XL. Finally, you'll need to grab an updated version of Luma 3DS that's compatible with this mod. In this case, it's called Luma 3DS 3GX. Scroll down to the Assets section and click on the boot.firm file shown here. Let's take these downloads and get them to the right places. I'm going to grab the File Explorer window for the Downloads folder and just drag and drop it all the way over to the left side of the screen. Insert the micro SD or SD card from your 2DS or 3DS system into your computer. I'm going to take that File Explorer window and just drag and drop it all the way over to the right side. If you followed my video jailbreak guide, you already have a CIA's folder on your device. So I'm just going to grab this CIA file and drop it in that folder. But you can drag and drop that CIA file wherever you wish on your SD or micro SD card. Next, grab the boot.firm file from downloads and drag and drop it onto the root of your SD or micro SD card. When prompted by Windows, select replace this file in order to replace your existing version of Luma 3DS with this updated one. You won't need the CIA file nor the firm file in your downloads folder any longer. You can select them, right click, and delete them, remembering of course they're still backed up in your recycle bin if you need them. Right click on the zip file for Snickerstream and select extract all. From here you can just extract it into its default path. Once you have it extracted, right click on the zip file and delete it in order to eliminate clutter out of your downloads folder. Double click into the newly uncompressed folder inside your downloads folder. You'll find the executable file for Snickerstream here. Double click on the file to launch Snickerstream for the first time. Counterintuitive though it may seem, all you need to do at this point is nothing. Just leave Snickerstream up and running right where it is. Grab the SD or micro SD card out of your computer, insert it into your 2DS or 3DS, and power on your system. From the main menu of your device, locate the FBI application. Select it with the A button to continue. Focus your attention on the bottom touchscreen display. The very first listing you'll see highlighted is SD. Select it with the A button. This takes you to the root of your SD or micro SD card storage. In this case, remember, I've copied the CIA file over to the CIA's folder. But wherever you have copied the CIA file, navigate to that and press the A button. Since this CIA file is in a CIA's folder, I'm just going to press A for current directory to select it. From here, you can select Install and Delete All CIA Files, in this case, just one of them, and press the A button to continue. At the confirmation prompt that appears on screen, press the A button to select Yes. Give your 2DS or 3DS system a moment to complete the copyover, and you'll see a confirmation message on screen. Press the A button to continue. Press the Home button on your device to close out FBI. You'll see a notification in the bottom touchscreen that you have new software ready. Tap OK to continue, and then it's time to open your present. Press the A button to unwrap the newly installed NTR boot selector. To launch it for the first time, press the A button. You'll see a confirmation message appear in the bottom touchscreen asking if you want to close FBI. You do, so press the A button or tap on OK on screen to continue. When NTR Boot Selector launches for the first time, you'll have several different options to choose from in the bottom touch display. All you have to do to configure the software is tap on Use Default for Use Default Settings. Then tap on Save Settings to lock in this change. To start NTR running on your system, tap on 3.6 to continue. At the notification that appears in the bottom touch screen, tap on Close. NTR is now up and running from your home menu, but you'll need to know what your IP address is in order to connect your device to your computer. You can find your IP address by launching Rosalina. Press the left shoulder button, 
down on the D-pad and the select button on your device all at the same time. From inside the Rosalina main menu, use the D-pad to move the blue highlight arrow down to Debugger Options and select it with the A button. Inside Debugger Options, you'll see a listing here for Enable Debugger. Select it with the A button to continue. This will start the debugger process. Once it's complete, press the B button to go back and you'll see your IP address in the top right corner of the screen. Make note of this information, you'll need it in just a moment, and be aware that your IP address is likely different from the one you saw on screen. Press the B button several times to exit the Rosalina menu back to the main menu of your device. Leave your device exactly as is and transition back over to your computer. When we last left Snickerstream, it was waiting for the IP address from your device. Type in the IP address from your 2DS or 3DS system in the top corner of the window. Be aware that you'll have to type over the zeros in these individual boxes, and the tab key doesn't always work so well to move from box to box. You may have to use the mouse pointer and click into each of these boxes individually in order to type over each of the zeros. One of the many great things about Snickerstream is that you can choose to show both of the 3DS or 2DS windows on screen simultaneously. You can show either the top window or the bottom window in full screen and various other options. They're all chosen right here from this drop down that starts out with vertical. Click the drop down and you'll see that you have a number of different choices available to you. Pick the one that appeals to you most and proceed. In this case, I'm going to use the one that says vertical so that it shows both the top and bottom windows of the device simultaneously. To start the streaming process between your device and the computer, click on connect to continue. You'll probably get a pop-up message from Windows Firewall requesting access. It's your network, your devices, so everything's good to go. Click on allow access in the bottom right corner to continue. You'll see a pop-up message that the connection for Snickerstream has failed. This is an expected behavior, click OK to continue. Now that you've given it firewall access, click connect again. Now the connection between your 3DS and your computer will be complete and you'll be streaming your device. But there are some key points here that you'll need to consider. The first one is audio is not streamed, only video. To capture audio, you'll need to connect a 3.5 millimeter cable either to headphones, speakers, or your capture device. Second, the frame rates will vary significantly depending upon which game you're playing, the speed of your Wi-Fi network, and which device you're using. I found an average of about 30 frames per second using a new Nintendo 3DS XL and a robust Wi-Fi network, but there have been reports that the standard old models of 2DS and 3DS have frame rates oftentimes as low as 10 frames per second or lower. Third, I was only able to use 3DS games with this setup. I tested a handful of Nintendo DS games and none of them launched. It crashed Snickerstream each time I attempted to play them. They did, however, continue to play as normal on the device itself. And finally, how do you close this thing? Oh, you can click on the red X in the top right corner while it's running all you want. You can even come down to the taskbar, right click and select close all windows. Yeah, that's not gonna work either. Here's the trick. Make sure you turn off your 2DS or 3DS first before attempting to close Snickerstream. Once you close the device, Snickerstream will go back to the start menu and then you can close it out from the top right corner just like you would any other Windows application. By the way, if you still need to jailbreak your device, this video shown on screen and linked in the description and pinned comment will show you the way. I'll see you over there.